Hey, what is up guys? Ethan here. Today I wanted to cover the process of installing OpenCL for whatever GPU you're using. Basically, I just wanted to cover what package is for what GPU, how to check the requirements of your hardware or of what is required of your hardware, and just all of these little things that I had to go through um, just over the last few weeks because I've been working with OpenCL a little bit and it's been a real pain so I figured I might as well just try to put together as much as I've learned into a video that hopefully makes it easier for anybody trying to get this to work. So I want to cover a couple things. First, uh, Gen2 specific. If we head into our package.use and we go and take a look here, one thing that we want to make sure of is that media libs Mesa, and I'll make this bigger, Media Libs Mesa, we want to make sure that OpenCL is disabled. We don't want OpenCL within Mesa. And the reason why is because Mesa's OpenCL implementation uh, conflicts directly with ROCM. And I believe it actually also conflicts with the AMD GPU Pro OpenCL. And you might be thinking that Mesa it must be a good option, right? Because Mesa is basically everything graphical with Linux and it's open source. But Mesa's Clover implementation of OpenCL is pretty awful for AMD. And if you're planning on doing anything with OpenCL, I doubt that Mesa's OpenCL implementation is going to be the best choice for you unless nothing else works at all. And even then I wonder if Mesa would work. I didn't have much luck with it. So first thing that we want to look at here is the ICD. And you have two choices on Gen 2, so I'm going to open up a terminal so I can just EIX them. So you have OCL uh, ICD, or is it ICD OCL? Uh, where is it? Here. So you have, yeah, you have OCL ICD, or you have uh, OpenCL ICD loader. Uh, they both work just if for some reason OpenCL is not working for you try the other one it might help I can't think of like a exact time of when you use one over the other but they both work so something to keep in mind and OCL is just OpenCL you're probably gonna see that word quite a bit and the next thing we have Mesa Clover right here again if you want Clover you'd want the OpenCL use flag I couldn't get it to work it's probably not worth looking into unless you absolutely have to and it only supports version 1.2 and for reference if I open up CLI info here for my current GPU and scroll up to the top right now OpenCL 2.0 is what I'm using and I'm using ROCM now before we get into the AMD stuff, because that's where it really gets complex, let's take a look at Intel. So it's pretty self-explanatory, the Gen 2 wiki does a really good job of covering what's what, and even if you're not using Gen 2, it's really nice to be able to look into. Um, the other wikis that I looked at, like ArchWiki, didn't really have as much detailed information. I felt like the Gen 2 wiki really covered it best here. Of course the package names are going to differ. Um, so. Of course, for the Intel CPU side, like um, I guess this would be integrated Intel graphics, Intel OCL SDK, which is a software development kit for Intel OpenCL. That's self-explanatory. If you're using Intel GPUs, which is kind of a rare thing, if I, I, I mean, I haven't really seen much of it. I guess this could also be integrated graphics because the CPU can also do OpenCL. So this is probably just like if you're using a CPU, no graphics, this is with graphics, whether it's an actual Intel GPU, which I think are very niche in the integrated graphics. Of course, I don't have Intel. I can't really tell you exactly, but that's like my interpretation of it. Try both, see what works. Um, we're going to skip AMD for now and on to NVIDIA. NVIDIA only provides NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. Uh, CUDA is probably your best bet for OpenCL as well. It should work perfectly fine for just about everything that you're using. And of course it should be self-explanatory, but whatever software that you're trying to use OpenCL with, you're going to want 
CUDA, or not CUDA, you're gonna want the CUDA use flag if you're on NVIDIA anyways, but you're gonna want the OpenCL use flag with that piece of software because that's how you're gonna enable the support for it as well as pull in the dependencies that are required for OpenCL to function in that case. And now that we finally got all that out of the way, let's get to the real bulk of it, which is AMD, because AMD has by far the most complicated OpenCL process that I've experienced so far. First things first, the kernel. So you're going to have to go through the kernel. You have to enable all of this stuff, and you're going to want to make sure that your AMD GPU, which is the open source kernel driver, is already set up. This shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, it's standard. Just check off whatever looks like it works with your GPU. Typically, it's not so hard. And if you're using Xorg, make sure that you're running either you'd load the firmware in the kernel or you use the udev use flag as well as the Linux firmware package. And that should work fine. Load it as a module in that case. And with all that out of the way, let's get started looking at the actual choices for OpenCL. So your first choice, which we already covered, was Mesa. Not a good option, so we're going to ignore that. Next choice is ROCM. Now, ROCM, and let's go ahead and pull up their um, software and support, hardware and software support, I mean. ROCM is the open source uh, OpenCL implementation. The only issue with it is that it's really, really picky about what does and does not work. So if we skim through this really quickly, I'll make this bigger again, make it more legible. Uh, how is this? Yeah, this looks about a good size. So. Here's what GPUs work with ROCM. Like this is like their official, like this should get guaranteed work. Uh, Vega 10 chips. So that'd be like the Vega 56, Vega 64, uh, Vega 7NM, which could cover something like a Radeon 7 or a Radeon Pro 7. CDNA GPUs. And now here are some that are not officially supported, but they should work. But again, they're not like GFX 9 is basically like these are guaranteed to work full development. Everything's working. GFX 8 are like they should work, but if they don't, it's not really supported. So don't expect too, too much out of it. So Polaris 11, which is like a RX 570 as listed here. Polaris 12, which is RX 550. GFX 7, which are the Hawaii series chips. And now here's where the difficult part comes in. So GFX 8 GPUs require both PCI 3.0, which is PCIe 3.0, and PCIe Atomics. And GFX 9 require the same exact thing. GFX 9 GPUs though, they that they say that they require PCIe 3.0 and PCIe Atomics, yet they don't actually necessarily need them to run. It's just a requirement. It's like a requirement in a game. Like say it says you need a uh, 1060 to run. Like you could run it on something else. It's, you should have a 1060, but you could get it to work other ways. So that's just kind of what they're trying to say here from my interpretation. And now you're probably wondering, what is Atomics? And Atomics is something that I was unfamiliar with until I had to start looking into this whole situation. And from what I understand, it's just like a feature on top of hardware that Atom or that a uh, ROCM requires to fully function. So I can't tell you exactly what it does, but I can tell you that it's not required in every single PCI slot. And every piece of hardware from the CPU to the PCI slot needs to have atomic support in order to properly get ROCM to work, which is where this starts to get complicated. Because how do you go about finding a motherboard that supports atomics and then finding out if every single piece of that motherboard between the CPU and the PCI slot that you're trying to use has that support? And that's the difficult part. So. I'll be showing you how to check if it's enabled for you currently, but it's hard for me to say how to actually pick it out. And this is just saying down here again, um, 
the CPU CPU and every active PCIe point between the CPU and GPU require PCI 3.0 and Atomics. So that's just what I was saying there. And a list of supported CPUs. So this is assuming that the CPU supports PCIe 3 and then Atomics, it should be like a Ryzen CPU, uh, CPUs and Ryzen APUs. Red Rippers, Epic, Xeons, Core i7 with certain generations, just in general, it's just giving you a list of what should work. Here's the nice thing right here though, ROCM 1.8, which is old by the way, we should be at about 4.2 now, is it 4.0 or 4.2, one of them. Uh, GFX 9, which includes the Vega 10, doesn't require PCIe Atomics, and I believe it can actually also run on uh, PCIe 2.0 which I can confirm I have been able to get Atomics, or not Atomics, uh, OpenCL under ROCM to function on a Vega 10, which in this case it was a Vega 56 that I tried it on, using PCIe 2.0 as well as no Atomics. So that's just something to note. And now let's get on to how we check if Atomics is working. And the way that you do this is really simple. You just go to your D message, which is just the uh, kernel log, and you put a pipe, and the pipe is just that vertical line. And if you do grep, you don't have to do the dash I, but just grep, and then you type in KFD, and it'll tell you. So it'll say if it's working, KFD, KFD, and then it'll say like AMD GPU or whatever the driver is. In this case, it should be AMD GPU. It'll say that it allocated a certain amount of bytes and then it added the device. In this case, this device is my AMD, like AMD brand GPU is a Navi 20 uh, GPU or is it Navi 21? It's definitely one of them. Yeah, Navi 21 right here. And it tells you right here if it doesn't work, so this is if it sees the GPU and goes, no, OpenCL is not gonna, or uh, Atomics is rejected here, OpenCL is not gonna work. It'll say KFD skipped device, uh, the number, and then PCI rejects Atomics. And another thing to note is if you have multiple GPUs, I should pull up the terminal again, if you have multiple GPUs and you're trying to distinguish uh, which one got accepted by Atomics and which one did not, you can type lspci-nn and then again grep and if you type in the ID, so one this case is 1002 and then a colon and 73b4 it'll tell you what device that is. And in this case, you can see it's the VGA compatible controller, Navi 21 RX 6800. So that's how I can determine, okay, the one that got accepted by Atomics was this specific PCI device. I want to point that out. So really there's a lot of iffy support. It's also saying that there is limited support or not really any support for all of the stuff below. So ROCM 4.0 should support PCIe 2.0 CPUs, but it's limited testing. So I mean, this is something that maybe if you want to go and test and help with, but it's not really supported. And then all of these down here, so Vega 12, Tonga, Iceland, Vega M, none of these work. Uh, Polaris is also one that really sucks because Polaris includes like an RX 5800, I believe. Or not 5800, sorry, RX 580. If I recall correctly, I could be wrong, but stuff like that. So if you don't have PCIe 3.0, which I can also confirm I did have that problem, you do require 3.0 for that to work. And it's also saying that, um, talking about Linux kernel stuff, it has like DKMS mentioned. In my experience, none of this is required. It should all be in the Linux kernel built in at this point or not required. But now that we've covered ROCM, Let's just assume that for whatever reason, whether it be your hardware or what GPU that you have is just not supported, say that you need your final alternative, last ditch effort, just hope that it works. You can attempt to use AMD GPU Pro OpenCL. And this is probably by far the most iffy implementation. I don't want to say it's bad, but it doesn't have a lot of support, I guess. Not that it doesn't have support. It's hard to 
illustrate what I'm saying, but it's the proprietary implementation. So when you're coming from the, the open source side of all this AMD stuff, and you're gonna throw some proprietary libraries in, there's just a chance that things aren't gonna mix well. Uh, there is though the choice to mix together ROCM with the proprietary AMD GPU Pro OpenCL, which does work as well. I can confirm that I, I have got that working. And it just, it's a per GPU basis, so if one GPU is supported on both, you have to choose which you're using per GPU, like on the process itself. But you can get them to work together. So to install this package is actually a little bit more complicated than you would think. And the reason for that is because on their website, on uh, AMD's website, you can't copy a link like this and then just wget it. Because they don't allow that like on the website you just can't pull that file you can only download it by clicking on it and then manually downloading it and saving it somewhere so i'm going to leave this uh amd gpu pro i already have the tar right here so i'm going to leave that alone i want to really quickly look at their website so let's open up i should have amd gpu pro right here So this is um, this is the wiki page for it, and they're basically explaining what it's all about. But this is the Vulkan driver stuff. A lot, a lot's going on with AMD GPU Pro. It's kind of crazy how much it, like it, it's not precise or it's not concise. The information's all over the place. They should have a list of what's supported. This is what I was looking for. Okay, so. What is supported, and this is a lot more robust than ROCM, it supports like everything in the Navi 10 line, uh, Radeon 7, Vega series, um, all of the 500s, 400s, basically all of their GPUs. I mean, this is officially coming from AMD. This is their AMD GPU Pro. It supports all of their GPUs and it's for Linux. So all of this is here. So in the case that nothing else works, this is your last ditch effort. Your GPU should be supported. Doesn't mean that it's gonna work because I've, I've also experienced, for example, an RX 5700 5, not working under the proprietary driver, whether that be for hardware or because of the software. So to install it is not actually as easy as you might think. So first step, of course, is to emerge AMG GPU Pro OpenCL. So we're going to go ahead and do the typical emerge command. And at this point, the emerge shouldn't work. And I'm going to show you what you're meant to do. So then you have to go click. It's going to tell you a link. It's going to say download it. And then you're going to want to put it in the dist files directory. And if you've never used this before, I'm going to show you how it works. So you're going to click on this link. It's going to take you to this page. And like I just did, we're going to download the Ubuntu 20.04.1 version of this. So we're just going to click on that and download it somewhere. And once we have it, we're going to control C out of this. We need to CP from our home directory or from wherever you downloaded that tar, I should say. You're going to want the AMD GPU Pro thing. We're going to go var cache dist files and we're going to drop it right in there run the emerge command and by the way this f i believe it stands for fetch or something along those lines once that is satisfied so once the expected amd gpu pro um, tar file is placed in your disk files this capital red f is going to become a lowercase green f which is just maybe the coloration of my system but regardless that's what it's going to be and then you can start the emerge process and what this is going to do is take that tar it's going to extract it. It's going to pick and choose only the OpenCL libraries that it wants. It's going to throw them into the proper directories, and then it's going to finish. And it's also going to tell you that the AMD GPU stack, which is the open source one that's in the kernel, is not officially supported. So mixing this proprietary AMD GPU Pro library set with your open source driver is not officially supported, and it might not work properly. Uh, on top of that, it's deprecated for the stable AMD64 because, of course, they want the open source ROCM. But 
it only provides legacy support, which means that something like a Vega 10 or newer won't work. And th that's hard to uh, think about, but basically that means something like an RX 580 may work. Something like a Navi 10 most definitely will not work. So if I type in CL info now and do dash dash list, you'll see that again, only the single pl uh, AMD accelerated parallel processing shows up. If if this GPU, which is definitely newer than a Vega 10 series GPU, were to be supported, you would see platform zero and platform one, and they would show up as two different devices. So that's how you can distinguish between them. And if we do CL info again and scroll up, you can see down here all of the information about it like what version of OpenCL it's using, the device's name. And you might also at some points see this error saying, talking about this library not being opened. I've never had any problem with it. It shouldn't be an issue. So don't worry about that basically, you might see it. But with that all being said, that's the cleanest possible way I've been able to get OpenCL to work. None of these options really feel good, but once once you can see, and I'll just show again, once CL info dash dash list, which CL info, by the way, you can emerge that as well. It should, I believe it does come with one of the ROCM packages, but it may not. So you might want to manually install that. Once your GPU shows up in here and it's not under Clover, because again, Clover barely works. In fact, it probably doesn't. You should be set, but maybe you're not. It's really, really a case-by-case -case thing, so if you have any questions, I'd, I'd like to hear about it in my Discord server because your questions and troubleshooting with you would probably help me just not only expand my knowledge, but also work on future stuff with that hardware. Um, if you like the video, feel free to leave it a like. It does mean a lot to know whether or not you do like the video or don't like the video. If you don't like the video, comment and tell me why. Also comment and tell me what you want to see next or any questions, that kind of stuff. Just any way you want to reach out to me if you don't want to join the Discord server. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of my content. And with that being said, I am out. Bye-bye.